Hey guys, what's happening? So, the package just came in. Um, having a new laptop uh, uh, to install Linux so I could uh, compile some uh, firewall images. I'm actually custom um, creating a kernel for a customer for a firewall project, um, open WRT project. But I need to be able to custom uh, compile and modify the firmware. So, I mean, I have a lot, bunch, a whole bunch of Linux servers, but I didn't really have any Linux workstations to, to do it. So, yeah, you can't compile it in Windows. So I need to have a Linux, but I'm going to use a Linux Mint. I'm going to open this up and going to get it going. All right, wow. This thing is massive. It's a Dell Inspiron 17R7720. But from what I could see, it looked like the special edition version of it. Core i7. Um... Also has a 32 gig uh, MSATA drive, which I'm probably not going to use. I'm actually going to take parts out of my old uh, Sony laptop, which is a Core i5, uh, but it's having issues. Like I uh, broke the hinge on it, LCD hinge. So it has four gig, eight gig of a uh, memory. I'm going to replace that with 16. Yeah, I'm not doing Windows 10 at home. I'm running uh, Linux Mint, 1080 screen. So they say that's definitely the, the uh, SE version, the SE, the regular standard version. They have the uh, 1080p screen. And the cool thing about this also, too, is it has a, uh, well, because it's a Core i7, um, it actually has an external, uh, you know, NVIDIA GeForce GT650 with two uh, gigabyte of uh, video RAM. So, open that. so it didn't come with any accessories, uh, it didn't come with a battery. Kind of expensive. I mean, I still paid 150 bucks for this thing online. Uh, I already have a PC adapter. Put on my, uh, my uh, Dell uh, computers. These speakers. I'm thinking this is a sub. I don't know for sure, but here are some speakers here. And yeah, the cool thing about these 70-inch laptops is they actually have a lot of accessories. Like this, this one actually should have two 2.5-inch hard drive bays plus M SATA. So another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna up change the uh, the uh, wireless Wi-Fi card to a uh, 2.4 gig and 5 gig uh, card. Um, this one only had a uh, wireless and 2.4 gig. So. Um, all right, so before I get too crazy with it, a couple scratches, I saw that in the picture, so. But look at this thing, it's huge. Hopefully it's not cracked. Open that up. All right. Look how big this thing is. This thing is huge. Yeah, nice laptop, Core i7. So it's a third generation Core i7. So, um, you know, actually they don't make a lot of these big laptops anymore. So they're kind of hard to find, but because my eyes are kind of getting yeah, I'm in my 40s now. My vision is not as good as it used to be. So it's like, man, I gotta wear glasses now, and it's like, uh, just my close-up vision. My far-away vision is perfect. All right, power button. Um, actually, it's like I said, I ordered a battery on on eBay, 20 bucks. Plus, I mean, I never usually run my laptops on um, on battery unless I have to, but uh, they run so much better on power. So hopefully, this power adapter is strong enough to power it enough wattage. Let's see, where's the uh, Oh yeah, also USB 3.0. I mean, I'm not obviously not going to use CD-ROM, but yeah, huge laptop. Okay, power adapter. Should be the right one. Firing this up for the first time. Um, so right now, like I said, this should actually have a one one terabyte hard drive, and I know a 32 gig SATA drive uh, or M SATA. So that's actually, uh, this is M SATA's before they actually had the M2 drives. So it was the version before uh, M2. Actually, I have a couple of their laptops with M SATA too. But what's weird is I, I was reading online that they were actually using this as a caching drive. Yeah, you know, with the one terabyte hard drive. So be interested to see how they have this configured. But like I said, I'm, I'm going to be doing Linux Mint. So I'm not going to, I'm probably going to end up getting rid of the SATA. M, there's no. Okay, so the M SATA is connected to the serial ATA bus, so you're not getting any benefit. It's not. It's not going to be any faster. It's probably going to probably be slower than like a 2.5 inch drive because you have less chips. So think of like RAID. Um, so when you have more chips, you can actually transfer. You can write faster and you can read faster if it's distributed amongst multiple chips. That's so uh. Okay, got power. Obviously, the power adapter works. Cool. Screen's not cracked. All right. Hard drive. Yeah, that shows up. So, like I said, I'm not going to be using that. 
Um, I'm probably going to end up dis uh, Ooh. Power adapter warning has detected, which is less than the recommended 903 watts. Really shipped. All right, so maybe I'll, I'll get those. I mean, these power adapters are uh, super cheap, so. But at least I can install with this. What is right before? So I'm assuming that probably we get a, th a throttling, but uh, this will increase time to charge a battery. Da, da, da. All right. F. F1 to continue. All right, so I'm gonna reinstall Windows and uh, probably should not reinstall Windows. I'm gonna put Linux and Mint on there and take out my components from my other laptop to put in here. That's a cold day today, but. Um, Okay, so like what I was saying earlier is that you actually, uh, having devices with more flash chips, actually typically, from my experience, actually performs better. You can write faster to it, and you can read faster to it. It just because you're distributing the load a little bit better amongst more chips. So it's sort of like the concept of like RAID, like RAID 5, or, you know, writing slower, but reading is faster. So, um, okay, I'm going to take this cover off here. Let's be a couple of, um, I'm probably going to end up using the 2.5 inch drive. Um, I have a Samsung on my laptop. And there should be two DIMM slots. DDR3 1600. Um, even though the uh, processor, processor itself can support 32 gig, I don't know if the motherboard BIOS will support it. Alright, so you got your two SO DIMMs, um, your flash drive, that's 32 gig. I'm pulling that thing out. I better not even have it in there. And that's the 2.5 inch drive. So I'm going to take this out, probably put my uh, flash drive in there. These things are just horrible, these old school like uh, drives. Alright, get it going. Oh yeah, I'm going to change this too. This is uh, the wireless Ensign Trino. Sometimes you can and can't do this. Sometimes the BIOS won't prevent you for... Prevent I never really had that so much with Dell, but some IBM laptops will actually prevent you from putting a different wireless card in there. Um, something about the FCC ID or whatever. But, uh, all right, so I'm going to trade it out. I have this old Sony 14-inch uh, laptop. So right now this thing currently has 16 gig of RAM with a 512 gig uh, SSD drive, Samsung. So I'm going to take that out and put it in this machine right here. Okay, so the memory I'm taking out is actually, uh, what was I say? I can't see here. 1200, I'm going to uh, 1600. But before I get too much more involved, I want to make sure this thing fires up. Sometimes these Dell laptops can be picky with their RAM. So I might or might not have to go buy new RAM. But I'm going to repurpose my older Sony laptop, maybe give it to my kid or something. Alright, I'm going to flip this around and make sure it fires up. Yeah, hear that? Bummer. Alright, looks like I'm going to need some more RAM, but I can at least install uh, Linux with the uh, 8 gig in there sucks. I was hoping that would work. I guess not. See, that's what I'm saying. These things are picky with this RAM sometimes, the Dell, you know? So, all right. Okay, so I just received the memory and not fired up. Um, so I'm actually, I'm going to try to go into the BIOS here. I'm just curious to see what um, what BIOS revisions on here. All right. So BIOS revision, um, A10. So I'm going to go online and see if that's the latest version, but so it's a third generation i7 and 2.4 gigs. So I mean, it should be pretty fast for, for Linux to compile images, um, especially with the SSD. You know, I just, uh, I mean, I guess I could do it in a virtual machine, but it's kind of like a, I also like this big laptop in case I want to take it to me with, like, with my cabin or something. Um, all right. Yeah, interesting. I never realized this thing actually had Blu-ray on it. All right, so I got this keyboard off. The wireless uh, adapters under the keyboard here. Bottom off. That's what I want to take out. It's a dual band. I was, for some reason I thought it was a Theros, but this is Intel. So, I actually like a Theros better. What I'm referring to is a chipset. All right, so now I have the uh, 512 SSD, 16 gig of RAM, and dual band, 2.4 gig and 5 gig uh, wireless. Close this up. All right, so shows the SSD drive, 512. 
I'm going to go down to set operation. Disable this right here. Go back up to, uh, that would be legacy if you had a really old operating system, like it's like an old version of the Linux kernel. Uh, I'm going to go there. This should be newer. Yes. And make sure everything's enabled. Then you enable boot. I want to move to a USB drive. Sandus Cruiser. Hard drive. Um, plus. Okay, I gotta bring this one up. There we go to the top. So it's the first boot. Exit. Say we'll probably get a warning again because of the AC adapter. And that should boot, be booting off my USB 3.0 little sand disk right here with Linux Mint. Okay. Um, F1 continue until I get the new AC adapter. Should be booting off this thing right here. Even though I do actually have Linux Mint on that hard drive. Alright. I don't know if it's booting off my hard drive. Nice OAO error. Yeah, I don't think it's booting off my USB drive. Might need to go to Legacy Boot. Yeah, this is obviously my other version of Linux here. Um, but it came out pretty nice. <laughs> Even with just my, my version I had on there. So, um, But I'm actually going to... It's better to reinstall from scratch. Even though I actually already have all my stuff on here and configured. Wow, that came out fast and the screen was configured. Pretty nice. Hey, right, here it is. Linux Mint. Definitely has come a long way since I actually started messing with it. I started messing with it in the... Uh, like I was saying, in the late 90s, uh, building web servers. Um, kind of got really into it around 2000, 2002. Um, yeah, just about everything I do, like phone systems or everything I do at, at, at work, uh, revolves around Linux. But uh, yeah, it's almost, I would say, almost pretty close to a desktop replacement now for Windows. I mean, I have all my crypto stuff on here, Zellcore, Exodus, um, Evolution email. Sorry for the background noise. But... Yeah, just about everything, you know, all the stuff I use for IT, you know, like Putty, uh, Bailey Natcher's on there. Um, I mean, obviously I can't get Adobe Premiere and Photoshop on there. That's kind of around one of the reasons why I don't totally convert over. But um, for just an uh, IT, IT laptop to troubleshoot and compile software images, um, pretty good. All right, so here's one, one of the reasons why I uh, had built this thing. It's because I actually have a project for a customer to build a uh, custom Linux-based um, router based on OpenWRT. But yeah, I need a Linux-based computer, like a desktop, to be able to compile the images. But all right, looking good. Cool, cool computer. Awesome.